So today I'm joined by Sean, who's been exploring using TensorFlow.js with geographical information systems. Now more on that in just a moment, but first, Sean, tell us more about your background and who you are. Thank you. I'm Sean McGee. Uh, I've been a developer at Esri UK for over five years. Esri create ArcGIS, which is leading uh, GIS software. And as, as Jason said, GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. Um, and fundamentally, that just means really advanced uh, maps and mapping. Uh, I started uh, Esri UK as a developer advocate. Um, hey. where, <laughs> where I um, where I dabbled with uh, machine learning for proof of concepts uh, applications, uh, and and for the last two and a half years, I've been a consultant helping Esri UK customers solve real world problems with GIS and uh, more recently GIS and machine learning. So I hear you've been working on some interesting demos. What exactly have you made? Recently, I've been exploring using TensorFlow JS with uh, imagery. Um, so imagery is, uh, if, you, if you think about looking at a map and you see the, uh, it's almost like a photo draped across the world. Um, so that's satellite imagery. Um, so we've been looking at using satellite as well as drone and UAV imagery um, to recognize objects. Um, and uh, fundamentally, uh, if we look at the TensorFlow.js uh, sample website, um, you know we've got the, the webcam sample um, where you can show an object and it can show show back what that is. You can do the yeah. same techniques with uh, with uh, imagery in GIS. Okay, that sounds yeah. pretty cool. So applying that same technology to your satellite imagery to do some fun things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Well, I like the real world use cases here. So maybe we can see it in action. Yep, sure thing. Um, so when I select on these cars, um, it shows the image of the car at the top right. Um, and it will show the label underneath saying cars um, with a, a little icon of a car as well. Uh, and then underneath that, we've just got meters. I'm toggling that with my keyboard just to bring back the size of the object. Um, so now if I select this ship, it will bring back that it's a, a boat um, with just a, a simple click. It's really quite performant as well. Um, and I'm just going to zoom over to uh, the port here and notice that it brings back boat at port. So with with the model that we, we trained, we're not only able to recognize what the image is, we can bring back what a potential object is doing or almost like more metadata rather than just saying this is a thing. Um, and uh, with this uh, final boat that I'll select on, um, note that the the green circle is the radius in meters. And then there's a black dotted box uh, that represents the extent that we bring we bring back. Um, but I just want to quickly go into the console, if that's OK, just to show you what's happening behind the scenes. So when I select on an object, it brings back the probability. Um, so this is bringing back the, the probability uh, of this boat. I'm going to go over and quickly show you what that looks like with the, with the car. So if I then select on the car, we can see it's got a 97% a probability that that object is a specific car. That works really well, actually. And <laughs> I like, you know, this has a lot of potential. And um, I, I like how we can you know, apply this to, like, obviously, we're looking at some satellite imagery right there and mm -hmm. then. But of course, you could get the computer to actually kind of scale that out and go, show me all the boats in port across a 10 kilometer yes. radius or something like this. Yeah. And of course you could have that counted for you automatically rather than manually having to go through this data or, or all these other things become possible once, once you are able to recognize things like this, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and one of the things um, that we can do is uh, if we think of imagery, that's just RGB data, it's pixels like a photo. Yeah. Um, but a lot of these like drones and satellites bring back more than just RGB values. So um, okay, if, interesting. if we stick for the boat example, if we've got bathymetry data, that's like elevation C information. Um, yeah. And a colleague recently uh, run a, a deep learning model and created a, a model that could look for shipwrecks. Um, so it can scan a massive area where a, a human couldn't manually check and just run a model to determine where the shipwrecks are. Wow, cool. that's pretty cool. So why did you use TensorFlow.js for this project? So we we found that we ultimately wanted something to give instant feedback. Um, and the specific customer we had in mind didn't want to have the whole overhead of hosting um, a whole Python script uh, in the cloud somewhere alongside this application. Um, 
And they also had a model that was potentially always getting smarter. Okay, cool. The problem was if we were to run that against a whole data set batch processing, um, then we'd have to do that quite frequently. So it's almost we wanted <laughs> live instant feedback uh, in the browser. I see. Very cool. So a great matching right there. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. So yeah, this clearly has a lot of potential. Um, I'm yes. curious to hear maybe what other areas this might go in in the future. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think there's there's so much potential with this. Um, there's there's obviously the, the potential of running this sort of technology against RGB and imagery that we've discussed. Um, then we could almost do a hybrid of uh, imagine using a uh, accessing CCTV camera imagery um, to, to determine, let's say, crowd control, which would be really helpful from a security perspective. And the GIS aspect, if you've got a whole map of CCTV cameras, you'd be able to work out where there's potential danger. Um, that's just an example of what that can uh, potentially do. Um, and then a similar thing could be applied for, you know, if a car park's busy, you could just look at the imagery and it could be saying it on a map that to say it's busy um, without a, a human having to manually do sure. something. <laughs> yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah. Very cool. And, and I've always been one, uh, wondering about like how real time the satellite imagery can be. Can you actually get like semi real time streams of, of a certain region that you could then analyze? Or is that more of a, you need to send a satellite up into space just for you to do that? <laughs> so that's, that's a good question. So you, you can do some near real time uh, imagery techniques. Um, what I was uh, particularly mentioning there was more like the static CCTV cameras that obviously have right, a live yeah, feed yeah. that are in a certain position. Um, yeah. But that does lead me to, um, a similar technique of uh, imagine uh, cars with cameras on. So yes, yeah. in England, we've got a lot of vehicles uh, from the council, like uh, bin trucks that have cameras already built on. If yep. we did something like detect potholes, then ah, nice. <laughs> using GPS, we can set it back up and saying, here's a pothole um, just with um, That's cool. some, some yeah. recognition. So give yeah. me analyzing the road as you go kind of thing and yeah. give valuable data back to people who need to maintain these things, of course. So that's absolutely. Cool. Yeah, definitely. So um, can people try this out for themselves? Where do they go? Yes. Um, so I've created a, a GitHub repository um, with all of the all of the code that I've used for this. Um, at the moment, I've left the image service uh, URL blank. So if someone's got an image service URL they want to put in, then, then they can. Um, but I've also given notes to uh, the ability to use the world imagery service is what I'm using in inside the demo. Um, but as a, a quick licensing thing, you need a, a developer subscription to access the export data, um, just as a quick note. But yeah, it's all available on GitHub. Perfect. Well, we'll put those links in the description after the show. So do go check those out. And of course, if you've got any questions for Sean, you can write them in the comments below the video as well. Now with that, thank you so much for being on the show. It's great to see this project and I'm very curious to see where it ends up. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you.